from Nick Hall Comedy. Joined, by, as always, Josh by... Griffey. Josh Griffey here. Josh good Griffey. Good to see you. Josh Griffey there. Hey, it's good to be back. <laughs> it's good to be back, kids. Uh, been a big week. I don't think we said that last week. Well, we're <laughs> back on the kids, though. That's cool. <clears throat> yeah, it is cool. <laughs> it is cool. I think it's really cool. Uh, yeah, but we, uh, I don't think we said big week last week. I think it was the first. So, like, if, you, if you're doing trivia, like, when you guys met... Probably they're going to make trivia cards yeah. for the Nick Hall Comedy Podcast. It'll be like this big game, kind of like Monopoly. And yeah. Like Trivial Pursuit. Nick well, hopefully Hall- with more cheating. Tri- Trivial Pursuit <laughs> Nick Hall Comedy Edition. They'll be like, which episode was the only one where Nick and Josh didn't lie and say they had a big week? <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, even harder question. What's one list that Nick ever won? <laughs> well, all of them. But- Not today, kids. <laughs> Subjectively, how many lists did Nick win? <laughs> all of them. All of them. No, 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 no. We do have a bit. We, got, we, we actually do have a, a pretty big week shaping up. We've got the new Kent Murphy video out now mm-hmm. uh, that we did with Jeremy Eisenhower, who was just, God, he was fucking awesome. Quite uh, an incredible guy. Uh, <laughs> even more incredible hitter. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I haven't done a whole lot of editing in my life. But even if I had, by far my best editing job this week yeah. Only because I made it look like Kent actually beat him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or in some way, shape, or form made him like basically. Kent, that's camera tricks too. <laughs> basically, like Jeremy hit three balls that didn't go out, and I put right. all three of them in the video. <laughs> well, I mean, he's getting old, dude. He's getting old and slowing down. <laughs> yeah. I literally I put every hit that he didn't hit out in the video. Right. <laughs> Everything else was a ding. That dude's a monster. But uh, yeah. the Mike and Psycho Bat. Pretty Making legit, psycho, guys. Uh, yeah, if you I play wish... any uh, stick ball, dude, yeah, that's a hell of a bat, man. We were crushing them with that. That's thing. like, uh, yeah, that's a legit. That's a legit league they play in with legit bats and legit equipment, and uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully, uh, that's part of the big week. We're gonna keep an open line of communication with Mike and try to do some more stuff with Jeremy and the rest of the softball dudes because it was just like, God, it was a blast. Softball culture, man, it's a fun <laughs> thing, dude. For like. <laughs> For being like a 30-year-old man that just really doesn't do anything with his life, being able to be like mildly good at softball just makes me feel so good right. about myself. Yeah, it, it's, our, it's our last bastion. It's like, are we still going to like exercise enough to like play basketball? Like, no way. But like, just to go up and take a couple hacks, yes. drink some beers like, once a week, like that's cool. Like I actually hit some home runs, and inside I was like, I'm fucking awesome. I'm killing like, it today. Do you know how badass you are right now, Nick? <laughs> it was like the voice in my yeah. head. And I'm uh, sure all the chicks there thought the same. Oh, yeah, guaranteed. I signed, <laughs> I signed a boobie. You sorta. signed a boobie? Well, yeah, like that one girl was like, hey, sign my shirt. And I was like, okay. I was like, where do you want me to sign it? And she did, she did the old classic like uh, truck stop move. Like, right here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. Do you mind if I cup that boobie? I didn't say that, but I wanted to. Was it over shirt? You got it on film. Was it on shirt? <clears throat> yeah, it was on shirt. I didn't actually get to touch a touch a bare breast, unfortunately. That sucks. Yeah, I would have said no autographs. So that continued my <laughs> fucking. It. That continued my eight year drought of touching a real <laughs> bare <Right>. breast. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I do I, it all the time on accident. <laughs> Accident just at the movie theater, just accidentally swipe a boob. Yeah, yeah. It's be like, no oh, deal. my popcorn, I can't find it. It's so dark in here. <laughs> is it on your boobs? You know I mean? Honk honk. Like uh, welcome. <laughs> you know, I think boobs is like the word boobies. Like if like if you just, if I just was looking at a girl, like show me your boobies, I would crack up. Boobies is still a really funny word to me. It's good. It's, it's pretty good. good. What's your favorite so, word for for boobies? You know, it's funny. Nick Hall Trivia, this was actually something we talked about on the first pod ever, I think. Oh, it is, isn't Me, it? Me, you, and Heath did it. Oh, yeah. Because Heath said bazongas. Yeah, he did. He which did I've never bazongas. heard in my life, but it makes me die laughing. I <laughs> yeah, love it. that was a good one. Bazonga rockers. <laughs> right. <laughs> we I did think, talk about uh, that. Guys. Sweater puppets is good. <laughs> sweater, well, uh, sweat hogs, I think is what Yeah, <laughs> just tits, dude. Just show me yeah, your teats. some teats. I actually say teats most <sighs> often. but Anyway, speaking of boobs... Old Manny Ramirez <laughs> got picked up by the Cubs today. He's, yeah, a, he's a real boob. So, yeah, as I read, uh, the Cubs picked him up for AAA, but he's not only listed as a player, <laughs> but as a coach. Like, they had it on the scroll Wait, as a player slash coach. He's going to Pete Rose this shit? 
I guess. I don't know if he's a manager, if he's like what? also like a batting coach. But like, if you go back through like the moments of Manny Ramirez's career, like easily the lowest baseball IQ of any player I've ever seen. <laughs> what? Like right there with like Yasiel Puig and like Dingusness. Like he was actually kind of Puig before Puig. What does he teach? Like the, I feel like the only way he could teach anything. Like how do you do that, Manny? He's like. I don't know, just be Manny. Yeah. Because there's always just Manny being Manny. <laughs> like, that's that his catchphrase. That was his thing forever. How'd you hit that home run? I don't know, just Manny being Manny. <laughs> hey, I'm sure that's how it <laughs> Manny, how do I raise my average? I don't know, just be Manny. Yeah, be Manny. <laughs> just be Manny. And by uh, be Manny, he means just steroids. But like, here's the th- I guess what I don't understand is this. Uh, the Cubs suck. Yeah. And the Cubs have sucked. For a long time, hey, like they uh, had that scare of almost being good in like '03 mm, when Steve Bartman ruined their ruined their lives. The documentary shows, <laughs> man, that was not the Bartman's right, fault. Right, but, but I'm just saying, yeah. like they had us, they had like one scare in the last 40 years of actually being good. Right, and and they blew that big time, like for no reason, big time. But they still like they're not they're not an organization that just like sucks and nobody shows up. They sell out every fucking game. Yeah. Like they don't need they don't need a sideshow. Like, the Astros could get Manny Ramirez and try to put some butts in the seat. I get that. Right. Like, nobody goes. But the Cubs don't need that. They need to just – they need to actually get good players yeah. so they'll stop sucking. Right. They don't need a sideshow. I just you know, know every mean? year they have my, the money. Uh, when my Milwaukee Brewers take the field, I'm just so thankful for the Cubs being in the Central. Oh, I know. Me too, it's man. It's like one of the greatest gifts it's that like a twenty wins a year. can receive. Oh, yeah. Easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Easy. That's ten, that's a that's a good chunk of your of your wins. Yeah, no problem. I mean, <laughs> shit. Yeah, we've already beaten them what like six times. I think this year. <laughs> no, they're like what half our the win total. Fuck, man. I don't know. I just don't get that move. But here's the thing, though, right? Like you always hear about how they have a stocked farm system with the Cubs. Like, if anything, Manny's going to come in there and just infect them with all of the worst oh, yeah. habits that a baseball player can have. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, it makes zero sense. It's uh, it's the only move this week that I heard of. That makes less sense was our buddy Sam who <laughs> traded two guys on his fantasy team for Prince Fielder like the day after they announced that he's probably not going to play. Yeah, the day after the year. next surgery scare. Sam's like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I need that I'm on my team. up two players. I need more of that on, the t- on our, my team. <laughs> Sam's laying on the couch right now. Yeah, Sam's laying over there being hung over uh, and sick. You don't get a talk. I just, uh, I don't know. It just made pretty much. Pretty much no sense well, to I me. Mean, to be fair, Sam from the Booze Buddies is definitely the Cubs of fantasy sports. <laughs> he really is. Uh, right. You know, it'll be at least 120 years till he wins the league. So, oh, absolutely, we'll be square. Absolutely, I don't know, man. It just seems, it just seems like a stretch. But uh, I don't know. The, the, the sports have just not really been really kind to me this week. Uh, They've been great to me, man. I know the Kings, uh, the LA Kings, man. They're just. God, they're whipping some ass. I know we have some Blackhawk fans. uh, Probably the majority. A lot of those motherfuckers, man. Those uh, Blackhawks fans, they love to talk. I'll tell you, especially after Game One, they just love talking all that good shit. Like I've watched, I've watched my fair share of hockey over the Mm -hmm. years, but I've never had, I've I've just never had a team because I'm from Indianapolis. Like we didn't have a hockey team. My buddy was a big Red Red Wings fan. Never really got into him. Couldn't get behind them. Never got your Red Wings, but, huh? But, <laughs> uh, like, being, like, since I've been in L.A. and, like, being in an actual city right. where a team is and where people actually – people care way more about the Kings here yeah. than – like, maybe the Lakers have have the one up on them, but certainly <laughs> sure. not even the Dodgers at, at this point, I think. I think the Kings no. have a more rabid fan well, base. Well, I think more people are afraid of the Dodgers. Right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. you, don't, you don't want to go to Dodger Stadium, like – yeah, if I was, like, to get in legal trouble, like, let's say, you know, I got a little buzz on, uh, ran over two six-year-olds with my car, murdered them. Right. Like, that would which, be my punishment is, like, hey, just go hang out at Dodger Stadium. Which baffles me because if you were, like, if somebody put a gun to my head and were, like, quick in less than one second, which major sport would you feel most likely to be killed at? A big hockey. Without, right. with, without, <laughs> without a hesitation. Unless you can throw in, like, Euro League soft, soccer. <laughs> yeah. Like that's but, it. but out here, it's like same scenario where it's like Dodger Stadium, you know, like it just yeah. make, ba- like baseball being the most dangerous makes zero sense to me. It is weird, but I don't know. Your Kings are doing good. My Pacers started started well in the series and fell off. That first game was incredible, man. I they know. Came out to ball after all and the it's, trash talk, and then game two, uh, the Heat six man sh- showed up, Joey Crawford, and just. Uh, <laughs> You're a referee conspiracy Oh, uh, dude. I mean, look at that guy's track record, and you can't. What was the stat they showed? LeBron James, 
This is this is a real thing. Playoff record. In the right? playoffs, LeBron James is now he's 26 and 3 in games that Joey Crawford is a ref and he's 40 and 51 in games where he's not a ref. Right. <laughs> I mean that's that's not an accident, dude. It's just not. You can split hairs with it all you want and tell and, and it's tell me I'm a retard homer idiot fan, but that you can't there's no denying that. There there's no denying that. Joey Crawford. Well, let's, let's say that let's say that this is not a conspiracy theory, but a fact, right? It's a yeah, uh, it is a fact. What like do you John think, Adams. What do you said. think, old uh, LeBron's having to show old Jay Croft to get the uh, special treatments? Oh, dude, I don't know. What do you think kind of deal is going on there? I maybe I, I don't know. I if I could if there were, if you were to ask me right now, Nick, you can punch two people in the face that you want. I'd be like LeBron James and Joey Crawford, no question. Sure. Again, one of those moments, gun to my head, I don't even think about him. Yeah. LeBron those two guys. And, LeBron and Joey. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Sure. But I don't know. I feel like, and then like game three just felt like we were playing eight on five the whole time. I mean, it was just, it was just stupid. Uh, even after the I, big lead, you guys were up by 15 uh, in the first half. Yeah. As soon as we got that big lead, then the heat just could not stop getting to the foul line. Like right. literally everything. You saw the one foul. They, they called, they called him legal screen on David West. And he was literally four feet away from the guy. He wasn't even yeah. setting a screen. I mean, the, it was the miracle. It was the miracle uh, contact. It's like he had to it, Jedi Force move his ass. It makes me, uh, dude. <laughs> it just, it just makes me, makes me fucking sick. And that doesn't discount the fact that the Pacers played sloppy as fuck that whole second right. half of the that Pacers game. Pacers love to turn the ball. So over. I'm not, I'm not putting all the blame on that shit. I'm just saying it exists. Fucking watch for it, because old Nick's right here. Well, Nick's Joey right. Crawford, you think he's the guy, huh? Joey Crawford is might be the worst human being alive. Like him really? and Do- him and Donald Sterling are neck and neck right now for worst. Humans. Really, and maybe that Cliven Bundy guy. Cliven Bundy's pretty and, rough around yeah. the edges. Yeah, but at least Cliven's got some lovable characteristics, right? <laughs> like he just. Well, like you know hold, they say like holding dead cows in interviews. Uh. You know they say like racism is ignorant. Well, like he's ignorant to his own ignorance. Like he just right. he's like, what? I don't get why everybody's mad. Yeah, when he <laughs> said like when he said on the newscast, uh, what did they ask him? And he goes, "I'm not sure that black people are better off. I think they might have been okay had be, they been slaves." And everyone goes, <gasps> and he just goes, "What? You guys didn't know that? <laughs> you didn't know like that? what? They didn't teach you that in your school? Like my school was right in the backyard. My mom had a shed. We learned things." Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I just Joey hate Crawford him. though. Hmm. But the Kings, the, the, what I was saying earlier was like, especially like watching with you, I'm kind of a fan now. Like I'm not, I don't, I don't want to jump all the way in the bandwagon because they're in the playoffs right now, and like Fuck I it. don't want to be that dude. Do but I've, it. I've enjoyed watching them. Yeah. And I'll probably like next season I'll probably put the Kings hat on and ride them out for a full season and not just Get be in. one of those dicks that's like, oh they're in the playoffs now, so I like them. I don't, I don't want to be that guy. But uh, it's okay, Nick. Come to the dark but side. I do know, I do know that I don't like the Blackhawks. And I, I never like have. The Blackhawks. I have a lot of Chicago friends, and I think yeah. that's what spoiled it for me. That's why I hate the fucking Bears and the Cubs the Bulls. and all those dicks. There's uh, something about Chicago and their sports. It's it's weird because it is such a good sports city. Like it, it is a great. The sports fans city. really rally behind the team. Maybe not the White Sox. You know what I mean? Like they don't really like those guys. You know, hide them out yeah. there on the outskirts of town or whatever. But uh, you know, they really rally behind their teams. But there is something about just. Epic failures. Yeah. I mean, other than like the Michael Jordan era Bulls, I mean, they've been pretty awful. Like if you just look at like good seasons that their teams have had, has to be one of the lowest (laughs) percentages of any like beloved sporting city. Like they're really bad at sports. Yeah. And I love how, I love how uh, the whole media does it, not just Chicago, but they talk about like Derrick Rose as being in the Pantheon with LeBron James and those guys. No. The dude's played like nine games in his whole career. You know the only NBA yeah. player you can legitimately compare Derrick Rose to on a list is him and Jawan Howard, just in who wears a suit better on a bench. That's really the only guy we can compare Derrick Rose it's to. It's not at even this true. Point. At least, at least one, uh, Jawan Howard got to wear his warm ups right. while he sat on the bench. Well, I mean, Jawan Howard, Jawan Howard is Jawan old Howard, as he is, yeah. like sixty years old. How old is this guy? Oh, he's up. There, his man. knees still better than Derrick Rose because he hasn't played in ten. He's years. on the Fab Five, dude. Yeah, Mo- half those guys are dead. I think. Right. Like Jalen Rose is alive. Weber's kicking somewhere. Right. Jimmy King and Ray Jackson. Who knows? Gone. Those those guys are dead. Gone uh, forever. Dugan Fife's probably floating around somewhere, <laughs> but he came in at the tail end of that shit. I think he was the bartender last <laughs> night serving me all those extra drinks. 
Oh man, I don't know. Like it, and here's the thing about the Cubs. Derrick Rose, pathetic. Speaking of bandwagons, and also like, worst MVP <coughs> ever. Who? Like that Derrick oh, Rose yeah. season? Come yeah, on, get the, uh, yeah, come on, come on. That was like when Dustin Pedroia won the MVP. Like, get real. Right. Yeah, they, I mean, he had a good year, but come on. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, like not even close to being you know, MVP that year. I just, there's something weird about Chicago where it's like, and this is the thing that I've heard before from Chicago sports fans. Yeah, is that they actually seem to enjoy. That their teams kind of struggle and suck a little bit. Like, I don't think the Patriots could exist in Chicago and fans would get behind that. I think they like that they suck a little. Yeah. They equate it to like this. We're blue collar. Like, we oh, yeah. do shitty jobs and we yeah. need shitty sports teams to reflect it. And it's like, first off, Chicago is like the third biggest city, guys. Like, you're not really like slumming it. You're not on, far- <laughs> right. you're not on like justfarmers.com or whatever that dating site yeah. is like. And secondly, <laughs> what a terrible, terrible, like, just kind of logic, you know, that they're employing. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, well, my job sucks, so my sports team's auto as well. <laughs> like, I don't well, know. Chicago, you baffle me. I feel I sorry know. for you. I, I just had a thought. Speaking of worst MVPs. Okay. And I can think of two more. And I'll tell for you. For basketball or sport in general? Just sports in general. Both okay. of mine happen to be baseball. The year, I think it was 2000, when Jeff Kent won the NL MVP. <laughs> Joke. Go look at Bond's stats compared to his that year. Right, not even close. Jeff Kent did fist fight him though. And, and I heard he was. Oh yeah, the in the dugout, it. and and also I think it was it was either ninety one or ninety two, when Terry Pendleton won the MVP over Bonds. Again, if if you just if you look at the numbers, it's I mean it's not even close. Well, a lot of that just goes to they like LeBron James should have won the MVP every season he's been in the league. Maybe maybe, maybe Durant this year is pretty legit. Well, but. he was he was trumped by what Kobe won it at least once while LeBron. Sure. But that's there. what I mean. There are like only like two or three guys and that Durant really are even year. close to LeBron. But they're not just going to give it to the same guy every year. Why not? I'll give you the worst MVP, Justin Verlander, when he won it. No, I disagree. No fucking pitcher. I disagree. No pitcher, right? Like, let's even say a pitcher comes in and they win 30 games, zero losses. <clears throat> Doesn't matter, dude. That's only 30 games they played in. Who cares? Like, if you're not an everyday player. But what do you, he won, what, 25 games that year? So? 24? Everybody knows, too. Like, I, I'm a proponent that wins matter somewhat, but it's not the most all-encompassing stat no, but for a pitcher God, in baseball. But his ERA a was... A guy like, who, that literally would be the same as, like, Derrick Rose only plays fucking, you know, a third of his team's games. Can he still win an MVP? No. That's craziness. Like, no pitcher should ever be the MVP of the league. I, I don't agree That's with that. That's just very crazy. I don't agree with that. You're tell- I mean, any player. Who, I don't think it should happen wait, very any often. Any player who has 128 RBIs, 40 home runs, they're easily more valuable to a team than a <clears> Justin <throat> Verlander. I, not that year. I, I disagree. Sure. No, absolutely. I disagree because that's that's 20. What is it? 24 or 25 wins. That you, you put any other pitcher in there, you're probably losing 13 wins. But even take, I'll I'll give you this too. If you take that year, what's the average ERA of the league? Right. I don't know, probably multiply it by half, 30. Four. Right. It's 90 runs. That's 90 prevented runs, let's assume, right? Or even less than that, because you have to take what he actually gave. Right. There are a ton of players that hit over 100 RBIs, so they're giving more to the team than he is protecting the team. It just never adds up for a pitcher. They don't play every day. Mm. Same thing. I don't think a kicker should ever be an MVP for a football team. Well, that'll never happen anymore. Yeah, right? <laughs> hey, you never know. <laughs> I don't even think there's a kicker in the Hall of Fame. Is there? I don't think there's like a kicker or a punter in the Hall of Fame. I don't know why there. I don't think be. there is. I think there. I mean, you know, there there has to be at least a kicker or a punter in the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame <laughs> celebrates like the best players of that league, right? A kicker is a position. But they only let in how many people a year? Five. Yeah, something like that. You think they're gonna waste one of those spots on a kicker? They should though, because like if okay, like I agree. Like, hey, we're back. We had a little uh, welcome back. <laughs> power failure. So that was fun. Well, you know, we finally got all of our equipment working this week. Yeah. Technology, like Jeff Goldblum said in Jurassic Park, life, and in our case, technology finds a way. Finds a way. Yeah. Finds a way to just nice set little, us back. Uh, I think it was a rolling brownout. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. You know, it's 2014. I guess I just live in the shanty of a shanty of a village. You know what a rolling brownout is, don't you? <laughs> is that what I was doing last night at the <laughs> no, bar? It's where you lay down flat, right? <laughs> and the girl, like... Lays on her, lays on her back like about on your knees roughly, and she pulls her feet up over her head and rolls, <laughs> so the butthole goes right on perfectly onto the pee. The B, really? The B under the pee. The old rolling brownout. The old B to B, huh? <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, man, that's a real thing. Sorry, kids. Probably shouldn't talk about that to you. Damn, I feel like you're just begging for all kinds of breaks and snaps. <laughs> Are we going to put some cool edit on there? Like, <laughs> it'll be like a Wayne's World dream sequence. Yeah, man. Yeah. Speaking of rolling bread outs, and, uh, you remember the guy? Uh, <laughs> Fucker rat in a pushy. Fucker rat in a pushy. Yeah. Can you believe that's a fake? Uh, I'm pretty <laughs> sad that it is, but yeah. I mean, it was too good. Like it, it was, it was like one it of was the perfect. Probably my favorite video. YouTube video of all time. <laughs> yeah. Just, just the. Man. <laughs> What's the guy called? So people can look it up. Uh, I don't know, but if you, like, as bad as it sounds, if you type in "fucker right in the pussy," <laughs> I don't know that I would tell people to Google that. Let me do it first. <laughs> I know if you Google that, was that game we were gonna play the, the the Google so we could like the worst things you could. Yeah, Google worst things you somebody. can Google. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know. Uh, like, actually, it is like the. First thing that pops up. There's only a mild amount of uh, pornography that pops up when you do that. So, oh yeah, you're all right. Absolutely, but uh, I don't know. I wish. I guess I was just really hoping that was real. That, that when I first saw that, <coughs> the old man. I, the first one I saw was when he ran out in the hoodie and took the mic from from the lady. He's like, "Fuck a rat in a pochi." Oh yeah, <laughs> he just, he just runs God, off. the guy was just a hero at that point. <laughs> But then I always and like they cut away the lady's like <gasps> they cut away and the news lady's like oh my goodness I am <laughs> oh my sorry God. jeez well then he dressed up as the same character and did the, the one this week he's like the lady was like what what do you think you would do and he's like well I'd probably sit on my porch have a beer and fuck her right in the pussy <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. but it, like it cause of, kind of find out though not only is it fake but the guy who makes them is really not trying to hide the fact. That it's fake. Some article I read apparently like on his YouTube channel, he shows like the behind the scenes of like how he does this to make it look like a real It looks exactly newscast, like a real because you know? the the very first one was from a, what a few years ago, you remember it, the video where he was the newscaster. Yeah, right. And he's like if they find he goes, if I found that girl, I don't know, I'd probably <laughs> fuck her right in the books. Well they did the, yeah. the story, the cover ruse was uh, a girl had been kidnapped, right? And she had been missing for days. And so the guy's like, I don't give a shit about her. I don't care about her. He's like, big deal. What? They found her? Like, cool. If they found her, I guess I guess I just fuck her right in the pussy. And he's like, ah, 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 you know, and he's like minding it. And then he cuts back to the studio and the lady's like, oh my God. You know, and that one, actually, I got to say, when I saw that one, I thought that was 100% real. Too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks <clears throat> like It's one of those, you're like, the candor was so good and it's such like a terrible thing to say that you're just like. You assume it to be true, even though you're Absolutely. like, God, I kind of hope it's not. I, I really was hoping <laughs> that it was true. The, the, the one news thing that was real this week, though, was the uh, the, the drug bust. I think it was, in Al- it was in Alabama. And they busted that dude for drugs, and like uh, he's sitting there with the police, and he's like, hey, it ain't mine. I didn't do it or whatever. And the news reporter <laughs> walks up and goes... How do you feel about this situation? He goes, roll tide. <laughs> <laughs> like, Just still getting it in there. Uh, what the, Alabama has to have like the most just disgusting, terrible fan base of all. Like literally, like these people just walk around in any situation, like, hey, fuck you, man. He's like, roll tide. Right. Like, that's their comeback. It reminds me very much of the everything. The topic we tackled weeks ago on the pod with the uh, Kentucky guy. With the tats. Like, the I, feel like, I feel like some of those like <clears throat> middle to southern states, man, like people are just lost their damn minds. Absolutely. Especially like college football, man. It's such <coughs> a cult around those things. Mm-hmm. It's uh it's just hard for me to stomach occasionally. Roll tide. Roll tide. I think that should be our I'd be like, dude, race. you got uh, you got bigger problems to face there, dude. <laughs> whenever it's whenever about I... to be a rolling brown out in prison for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> You need to protect yourself. Uh, lay down there, Bubba. I'm going to roll and brown out on you. Yeah. Oh, Come on, God. buddy. <laughs> what? Well, it happens, man. It's yeah, that guy's about to have a bad time. He's going to have a bad time. When you Pizza, when you're supposed to french fry, or french fry when you're supposed to pizza. Are you trying to pot a computer no, at the no, same no. time? No, no, no. I'm trying to figure out who... I'm just getting ready for something. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Hey, man, I'm multitask. I'm multitask. Uh, I don't know. I feel like now, every time... Whenever, if I feel like I'm getting beaten in an argument by you, I'm just going to stop and be like, roll tide, just right in your face. I can't wait to hear that fucking <laughs> ten times a pod. <laughs> <Roll tide. laughs> More like none. I can just hear your fucking internal monologue. Shit, it's gotten away from me again. He's so smart. Roll tide. Better then, pull out my roll tide. <laughs> well, then the guy, so like, but the guy was, uh, 
he was like yelling at the police. He was like, it wasn't me, it ain't mine, blah, blah, blah. And then, the, you know, he says we're all tied. And the reporter goes, so why'd you do it? And he goes, I don't know, it's just a dumb idea. She goes, are they yours? He goes, no, nah, they ain't mine. Or she goes, do you have the prescription for those drugs? He's like, no, nah, it's just a dumb idea. Or so just conf- he confesses to the reporter. I don't know what he thinks right. in his head. Like, I can tell reporters, it's like that uh, reporter client. Uh, confidentiality. Confidentiality. <laughs> you know, you know they can't go nuclear on me <laughs> in, the, in the courtroom for telling the roll tide. Roll tide. Your Honor, I would just like to say, roll tide. All right. <laughs> well, uh, not guilty then. Yeah. And also roll tide. I feel like you could probably get off in Alabama off a lot of trial. Like if you just stood up in court, and you're like, Your Honor, roll tide. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yes, but sir. you also got a good <laughs> shot, right? That like as the guy's handcuffed, you're like, roll tide, roll tide. And it's just this big motherfucker. He pulls out his stick. He's like, War Eagle. Yeah. And just like, you know, just pulverizes yeah. you with the nightclub. <laughs> a lot of taser, you know. Or Sam Jackson's on the stand. He goes, yes, he deserves a die. And I hope he burns in hell. <laughs> right? <laughs> this fucking fist fight breaks <laughs> out with a little... <laughs> And we all fucking are the better for Free Carl Lee! Yeah. <laughs> but whatever. I, think, <laughs> I could live in that world. All right. Well, let's get to it. This we got a, we got a, a, a big segment. Uh, this is what I was looking up when I was multitasking, dick face. Uh, let's go Cards 04. Terrible screen name, but good idea. Terrible screen name. Worst team. He wanted to find out number. what our all-time baseball team would be based off of... Movie characters that were in baseball movies. Right. So Josh and I went ahead and spent a little bit of time. So little, yeah. Oh wait, I got the Mitch Williams thing going on here. The human ball head. head. We spent a little bit of time. Listen, Harold. Listen, Harold. Harold, that was a hit. Harold. Yeah. Well, Mitch Williams also is the king of like. Well, if it ain't got horns on it, we don't call it a toad. Know what I mean? <laughs> like this makes up those weird like southernisms. You're it's like, like, it's like a, literally like every other analyst on MLB Network just looks at me like. We don't know what you're saying and quit bouncing your head around. Like, he does, stop he it. does the doctor film. You know, down in Texas, we got a saying. Yeah, exactly. After everything. All right, so. Hey, we'll, guess what I don't want, buddy? Anything from Texas, <laughs> zip it. Dude, I love Texas. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's such a good place. I keep saying, dude. Dude. Dude, bro. So badass, bro, yeah. dude. <laughs> bro. Bro. All right. Uh, all right. So let me go ahead and rub my nipples. Yeah, get warmed man. up for this segment. Better lube your Kids! Hole. Here we go. All right. So this is the all-time baseball team. So, yeah. Okay, so... Based off of baseball it's movies. It's fictional baseball players, so you can't do, like, Babe Ruth from the Babe. <coughs> fictional baseball right. players. Uh, we got one pitcher, a whole team, and a manager. Is and, that correct? Yeah, and I did a DH, too. I don't know if you did, but... Just oh, we're doing DH I did a DH, and I did uh, a bench coach, or, like, a third base coach. Okay. I just went a little extra mile. You know, you can do whatever you want, but we'll stick with our format, and if you think of a DH, you can shout it out. Easy. This makes my list better, because right. I was going to have to convert the greatest film DH ever into a uh, third <coughs> baseman, so right. now I'm set. Great. So let's start. Uh, let's just start with the first baseman. Okay, sorry. I'm tweaking my list yeah, a tweak minute your now. List. I'll, I'll talk here. to the kids for now. Your last hey, second change. I I'm still so ready. Go for oh, it. Oh, are you ready? Okay, first baseman. Who you got at first base? Uh, for first base, let me see on my list. Oh yeah, I went with uh, Clue Hayward, the the evil nemesis from Major League. Mm. Uh, he was a Yankee, the most feared man, Triple Crown winner. He had fifty five homers, I think like one hundred and fifty plus RBIs. They listed him at in the movie. Super intimidating, spits chew like a champ. That's the kind of guy I want to set the Boy, emotional tone. That uh, for my that team. big long description just came. Just sounded like a guy that. Uh, Feels really dumb about his pick, so he's trying to overcompensate with a no bunch way. of meaningless fucking stats. So at first, baseball is literally <laughs> only about stats. At first base, I've got old Lou Collins from Little Big League. Pathetic. No, nah, dude, he banged. Wait, the, he yeah. banged the coach's mom. Big deal. That's a fucking power move, dude. That's you a guy else? that I want who, in my he, clubhouse. Time out. Who? Uh, what was his name? Uh, the guy that banged LeBron's mom. Oh, uh, Delonte West. Yeah. Better story than that. <laughs> no. He's not on my team. He's on none of my teams. Go, not a good go play on any team and try to bang your coach's mom. You can't do it. Old Luke Collins did it, though. All of my teams. And he also you just... You hear that, Josh fucking Pollen? <laughs> and he manager also... Of the spoilers. Hide your kids. Hide your mom. He also almost had the home run in the one-game playoff against the yeah. Mariners, but fucking Griffey robbed him. 
Of course he did. The one time Griffey didn't break his wrist jumping right. for a home run. No, oh, that's fine. It I takes mean, old, you, know, you got a little short, fat ginger um, who's just not really that good or powerful. I've got maybe the best fictional baseball hitter of all time. Well, that's not even true. He's in the movie for like three minutes. They give his stats in the movie. It's in his description in his first walk-up when he takes wild things I, I wish I would have Googled this, all that, too, so I could remember. I Googled it. stats on almost everyone on my team. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, obviously, I win that round. Who do you got at second base? Uh, second base, I took the man who can play any position, utility man. And in my team, he's playing second base, one of the greatest... Uh, defensive players of all time in baseball history, Kelly Leak. Bad news, Bears. Wow, that's a stupid position to put him at. But I, one of well, players. everyone else is so stacked. I got to get him in the lineup. He can play everywhere. I have. Well, I've got Kelly Leak on my team, but I've got him in an actual position where he'd be useful. He's a great player. Uh, at second base, I've got Taka Tanaka from Major League Two. <laughs> yeah, dude, I feel like he's going to go easy <laughs> row. Probably about 270 hits a year each time. Well, I feel like and this is the problem with taking too many guys from Major League is because they stink all the way for the first half of the season. So like, well, your team's going to be really in a hole until they're in the first turnaround guy from phase Major of League. the movie. My first guy was from I know, I've got some Major League guys yeah. too, but that's the problem. See, it's the reverse of Clue Hayward, who's great the entire movie and strikes out he's once not the great. He's great for like the three no, minutes. You don't win a triple crown unless you're great all season. <clears throat> well, I got Taka Tanaka at second, so clearly I win that one too. Probably uh, not, but third base, who you got? Now this is my sleeper pick. I had to go deep <laughs> for this one. <laughs> oh, real deep. Have you ever heard of a ball player named Ed Sullivan? Ed, not heard of Ed Sullivan from the Tonight Show? No, with Tony Ed Cubs. Sullivan, right? He's They're a not. little known player from the movie Ed, starring Matt LeBlanc. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Where Matt LeBlanc's a minor league pitcher who in the movie can somehow throw a 125-mile-an-hour fastball, but he's still in minor league ball. Right. Ed Sullivan is actually the chimpanzee that they <laughs> hire to come play third base. And he can throw the ball so hard like that, that in the movie, the glove literally rips on fire. The first baseman looks at it, and there's flames on it. He burnt a hole in the glove. He can hit home runs, amazing fielder, unparalleled athleticism. To any human player. So I think it's a great pick. Ed Sullivan. Well, okay. But, funny side note, the movie Ed is actually in the bottom 100 on IMDb. <laughs> well, yeah. It's rated like a 2 out of 10. It's the <laughs> 86th worst movie of all time. So you're taking a monkey at third base. <laughs> you're right. I'm going to go with probably the only logical And it's not a monkey, it's a chimpanzee. That's what I said. Different kind of primate. That's what I said. But uh, I'm going to go with the only real logical answer and win this category as well. we got Roger Dorn. A third base. Yeah, right. From Major League One. Yeah, the and whole game he's just going to be complaining about calisthenics he doesn't think. <laughs> what is that to LA do. bullshit, yeah. Dorn? No. He's all right. We, we all learned about Dorn. He was a man at the end of his career who's more interested well, in his finances. Than <laughs> right, and he's, he's a cancer in the clubhouse. Cancer and in the clubhouse. And you need that guy. You need that guy. You need that guy? Yeah, you need a little controversy. Well, that's why I've got some adversity to fight through, and Dorn's okay. going to provide that. I mean, Dorn was an established player. He was a good player. He had a good career. He's not yeah. a bad pick. Right, right. And, uh, but I, I mean, he can't rival the athleticism and power and skills of, yeah, a, you know, of a chimpanzee. Rick, Rick Vaughn banged his wife. No big deal. Yeah. See, that's your yeah. thing. You're looking for guys who bang <laughs> other people in the clubhouse. Oh, God. Here life. comes Dorn. Yeah. Strike this motherfucker <laughs> out. <laughs> okay. All well, right. That just really puts me way far ahead now. Well, not well. if you think that a chimp is a better pick than Roger Dorn, well, I just obviously feel sorry. Obviously, didn't see Well, I movie. just... Well, hell, I just feel sorry for you. You obviously didn't see the movie. He's way better at third base than Dorn. Whatever, dude. He can yeah. jump like 10 feet in the air. He can land speed of a chimp. I just Googled this. 25 miles an hour. You're making a mockery of this list. Am I? Yeah. Hey, I didn't <laughs> invent the fictional baseball player. I'm just going with what was presented to me. Fine. What, you was I going to pick girls from a League of Their Own? Not I almost did. I almost did take one. You would have lost I almost took Marla Hooch. You would have just lost base immediately. Here, but I didn't. I took Tanaka instead. Yeah. All right. Who you got a shortstop? Uh, this one was easy. Benny the Jet Rodriguez from Sandlot. Yeah. The obvious choice. I got Benny the Jet there, too. Fair enough. I got Benny. And Benny the Jet's actually, uh, if you go back and like watch the movie, he kind of can play anywhere. He's a Kelly Leak. Uh, He's the best kid on the show. <clears throat> but what I'm going to, like, I'm going to have him at shortstop. I'm going to have him in the deepest hole on the infield. Yeah. He's probably got the strongest arm. Let him make the junior All my throws. steals. Batting two in my lineup. Yeah, probably bat. Uh, yeah, because I'm going to knock at one and probably Benny, Benny at two. Ooh. So you missed the best leadoff man ever in a baseball movie for your list. Well, no, I, maybe I didn't. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so we line up on that one. Who you got a catcher? Catcher, this is my guy, man. I'm a mind games guy. Catcher is uh, mostly a cerebral, cerebral position. This is where you get in the enemy's head. 
you trash talk them, you bring them down. I'm going uh, Hamilton Ham Porter from the Sandlot as well. Yeah. Just the best trash talk lines ever in a baseball movie. I need that kind of joy. Baseball's a long season, too. You need your clubhouse funny guy to keep you light and happy throughout the season. And he's just terrorizing uh, opposing players. <clears throat> wasn't he easy. in, uh, he, was in he was the goalie in Big Green, yeah. too, wasn't he? Yeah. Any position where you put <clears throat> fat kids so they don't move around, that's Not much of a baseball player, though. And he was good in that he's, movie. And he's 10. He was good in that movie. <laughs> he was not bad. He was good in that I, movie. Again, I took the only... It's more mind games. I mean, Benji Molina still has a job, so <laughs> <Yeah>. like... <laughs> Benji yeah. Molina is what Ham Porter True. turns into. <laughs> I took probably the much better choice at catcher. You, you took the generic? Crash Davis. Yeah. Crash Davis. Well, the, probably the most generic one would be... Uh, Jack Taylor. Jack Major Taylor. League. Tom yeah. Berenger in Major League. I mean, those two, they're both almost the same guy. The, old, the risk you take with bodies. old Crash is Crash never really made it to the bigs. Like, he was in the show on and off. He talks about making it to the show yeah. for short periods of time, but he never was, like, a lifer in the pros. Also bangs a teammate's girl. Well, yeah. He, fitting your team theme. Susan Sarandon. And, and he, See, and, I'm going deep. I'm like a Sandra <laughs> Metrics guy. Listen, he broke the record for dingers. In double A ball, in the movie. Big deal. So yeah, and I mean, you you, you gotta. Have, Costner's been in like what three baseball movies now? It is incredible. He didn't make it on my list. And so like <laughs> I had to get him at one. Right. One of them. And Field of Dreams, in my opinion, is just kind of a dog shit movie. Say what you want. I'm actually not a big people fan. like celebrate it, but it's kind yeah. of a bullshit movie and uh, super average. Uh, super and uh, uh, what was the list. other one? For the love of the game is just a eh, so so yeah. movie. It's all right. You know, old timer throws a perfect game. I get it. No big deal. All right. All so right. That's the infield. Left field. Who you got? Uh, left field. I'm going. Uh, this is my major league. Pedro Serrano. Pedro. Power hitting machine. Plus, I like <coughs> a spiritual man, the Joe Boo. Yeah. In case any guys are in a in a pinch, they can go set shots in front of Joe Boo, give him a cigar. <laughs> yeah. Plus, that's just a fun atmosphere. Ah, yes. But everyone knows you don't drink Joe Boo's rum. You Jesus. drink your own rum. I like him very much. Yeah. Are you saying Jesus <laughs> Christ couldn't hit a curveball? <laughs> But he'll help me hit curveball. <laughs> hey, Joe, hey, bartender, Joe Boo needs a refill. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, Pedro Serrano. I mean, you're going to get a lot of strikeouts, bad, bad, yeah, average, he's like, prone he, to slump. I feel like he's the Adam Dunn, probably. Right. Like, you know, but that's the way Major League Baseball is going. Like, right. They'll settle on a guy who bats Him and Mark Reynolds, yeah. And he like, can hit 30 home runs. Absolutely. So, yeah. I don't, I don't hate that pick. Left field, I went ahead and took Willie Mays Hayes. Okay. Also from Major League. Um, He's my center fielder. To yeah, the gun, so we can well, talk about him now. I, you know, I I thought about putting him in center field, but I've got a better player in center field. But I thought, well, I don't want to waste Fine, hard to believe. Willie Mays Hayes. Right. You know, nice catch, Hayes. Don't ever fucking do it again. Right. Uh, yeah, you gotta have the basket catch out there. Plus, you know, is it one or two when he pops it up and starts doing push ups? You know what uh, I mean? He's like, Stop that's, hitting the ball in the air. That's part one. Is it part one? Yeah. I think that's part one. But when he comes out, I mean... But he, he changes actors in part two. Yeah, because it's Omar Epps. Yeah, it went from Snipes to Epps. But in the first one, when he... When which which Maze Hayes would you when, rather have? Oh, Snipes, for sure. Snipes, for sure. Yeah, not even close. Uh, right. But in the first one, when, when Snipes, <laughs> when he's like sleeping... They put his bed out in the parking lot during camp, right. and he just comes in his pajamas. <laughs> and wins that sprint. And starts karate chop running for the win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. I'm ha- I want that guy on my team. Runs like a 2.44. Mad speed. 2.440, dude. Gotta have yeah. it. Again, though, the major league problem, man, with my outfield is like, my outfield is going to be terrible for half of a season every year. Probably. Until we get good and win this yeah. World Series eventually. Who you got in the center? Uh, center, I got Hayes. I got William Hayes Hayes. William Hayes? Yeah. Well... Uh, this is where I utilize probably the best baseball player from the movie, Kelly Leak. I'm going to put him in center field, let him run in the outfield, because that's what he does in the movie. He, they yeah. put him in the outfield and they tell him to catch every fly ball no matter where it is. But even Kelly Leak does not have the wheels that Willie Mays has. <coughs> uh, yeah, he does. Plus, well, I mean, he plays plus, on, he plays on a Kent Murphy little league. When he walks field. up to that lady, he's like he's like 12 in the movie or 13. He walks, he goes, "I drive a Harley." Right. Does that turn you on? Harley Davidson? Yeah. <laughs> just chain smoking. Yeah. I like any baseball player yeah. that chain smokes. Kid rolls up yeah. to practice on a fucking motorcycle <laughs> smoking a cigarette for little. <laughs> like, what a all time yeah. badass. Kelly Leak's on my team. I feel like, you know, he's fine in the, the two hole. All time badass. Two bagger. He'll be fine. Yeah. All right. Who do you have in right field? <clears throat> Who do you have? Roy Hobbs. Easy. The natural. Uh, again, natural to me is like Field of Dreams. Kind of a dog shit movie. Yeah, I disagree completely on the natural, man. Busting the fucking lights yeah, out. Yeah, that the guy, seems so corny. Cool he made I hate his it. own bat. 
Yeah. Out of the splintered, lightning struck tree. Uh, he's just an incredible power hitter. No, he's good. Um, uh, Roy Hodge is a good pick. Had he not gotten shot with that bullet. I took a sleeper here. Incredible. And he's a good pitcher. Yeah. So you can utilize him in case you get in one of those like 15 inning games. Pretty good pitcher. Come yeah. in and crush. Yeah. That's not a bad pick. I went with I went with a little bit of a sleeper here. Ed? No. Took no. Matthew McConaughey from Angels in the Outfield. Nice. Yeah. I don't even know what his character's name was in it. I know, I know in the movie he couldn't hit or catch short of the Angels helping him. Yeah, pretty much. But as long as he has the Angels, <laughs> you're going to be looking like, good, yeah. By that time, uh, Tony Danz is going to be there because he was a smoker. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, be JP out there. Uh, yeah. the, I think the only person whose name I remember from that movie is Maple. <laughs> and, is that the pitcher? I don't know, but when the, the, the scene where they're singing in the dugout, he's like, "We're the boys of summer. That's a big bummer." <laughs> and like, uh, Danny Glover walks in and goes, "Can it, people?" Yeah, <laughs> and that's Flips like, the table <laughs> tomorrow. No, what was the catcher's name in that movie? The big fat guy was just crushing. Like <laughs> he didn't even in the movie they showed him just eating the roll of salami. Like he didn't even <laughs> yeah. cut it. Just. Argh. Well, the, one, the name I was trying to think of and the today. scene where he's running to home base and the fucking angel slaps oh, yeah. him on the ass to make him slide like the, 100 feet. That's the, incredible. The announcer from Angels and Outfit, I couldn't think of his name, but that scene where he walks in, he's like, you can't fire me. I'm Tex. <laughs> Whatever it is. Right. Like, couldn't think of his name. I, I need to Google it. Look, if you guys know, <laughs> just put it in the comments. You know, I still don't have to Google it. Right. So I'm not real good at technology, as we all know. Might get a rolling brown out yeah. here now. All right. Well, let's. Uh, what? Who's? Uh, who's your starting pitcher? Who's your ace? My ace is Steve Nebraska from the movie The Scout. I love it. <laughs> Albert Brooks goes down to South America and finds a hero. Steve Nebraska. Really funny movie, actually. It's not bad. It's a funny movie, it's but Steve bad. Nebraska not only can he throw just like the fastest fastball ever, but he can also hit 500 foot dingers constantly. So if I'm in the NL. This is the kind of pitcher that you really need. Yeah. Your number one yeah. ace can also be your greatest power hitter. That's an incredible asset to the team. True. True. Not bad. Pitching was the toughest one. So there's like 50 great pitchers. There's some good time. ones. Yeah. Uh, my pitcher, my ace pitcher, uh, which is it was a tough decision for me, but I went with uh, from rookie of the year. Yeah. Not Henry. Old Chet Stedman. <laughs> really? You yeah. picked against? Because I almost picked Henry. But you never thing. know. Like he hits puberty as good. I'll just say itself. I've got Henry as my closer. Here's okay. Henry. Henry does, look great. Story. The kid's ten- tendons healed tight. Threw a flamer. That's all he threw. They only threw a fastball. He doesn't right. last as a starter. Right. He gets out of the first inning maybe, and then they start timing him. Kid's getting lit up. Chet Stedman's a crafty old timer. Probably throws a spitball. You know, has the grease on the hat and under his armpits and all right. that. All that good shit. Plus, it's Gary Busey. Like I'm hey, not hanging out with Busey for 160. I'm not going to make a years. list that has an opportunity to have Gary Busey on it and not put Gary Busey on that list. Right. Don't care what it is. I mean, your ERA friend's going to be like six <laughs> on the if season. You were like, yeah. If you were like make a list of the five greatest actors of all time, like Busey's eligible, I'm putting him on it. Right. Probably doesn't belong, but I'm not going to over. I'm not going right. to overlook it. It's Gary Busey. Well, I mean, when our team's got- playing, you know. Ed's going to take him yard like six times a game. I don't think he Stevie is. Stevie Nebraska will take him yard. Who would you have as a closer? My, my closer would be Henry Rungardner, just coming in throwing heat. I like Henry a lot as a pick. That's a really good pick. Um, obviously, I don't, I don't really like Wild Thing, though, too prone to give up the dinger. But he'd be better as a closer than a starter. But right, but he's too him. prone to give up hits all the time. And also, it's the major league thing. He's, not, he's only good right. for a third of a season. So, uh, man, push come to shove. <laughs> Maybe this is where I'll, I'll take Nuke Lelouch. I'm going to convert him. Nuke wouldn't be bad because he, he, like, he yeah. all he does is want to throw his heat. You yeah, know? He, he wants to throw the heat. Shaking off curveballs. Yeah, you don't yeah. give him a lot of time to have those mental meltdowns in yeah. the middle of the game. Just get him. Actually, wrong. I'm wrong. Kenny Powers is my closer. Uh, Kenny would Kenny be Kenny Powers good. is my closer. Yeah, Powers would be a good closer. I like yeah. him when uh, on Bull Durham when Nuke Lelouch shakes off the curveball. And... Uh, <laughs> And Costner just looks at the batter and he's like, here comes the heat or whatever. Right. The dude fucking just smokes one off the bowl. And he yeah. goes, Nuke Lelouch, he goes, it's like he knew my pitch. And, and uh, Costner's like, he did, I told him. He's like, don't ever fucking shake me up again. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, Hell, I'm sorry, Nuke Lelouch, I think that was a good idea, but I think I just got to take him. He'd be a good man. long reliever. 
Yeah. Throw him in long relief and then let... Uh, oh, yeah. If I had a bullpen, I'd have Danza back there chain smoking, <laughs> Kenny Powers doing God knows what out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd probably just put Gary Oldman out yeah. there just to do like I'd That have, would be the most fun part of it. I'd have the season. dude from... Uh, the dude from Little Big League, I can't think of his name, but when when uh, when he comes to take him out of the game, he's got the big fucking goatee. And the oh, job. yeah. He's like, what do you want, rat boy? Right. <laughs> you know, like, or his first coach like, I don't like your curve, Dennis Maria. <laughs> I don't like your curve. You know why? It doesn't curve. And then the other pitcher comes out, and he's like waiting to take the mound, and the guy won't leave, and he goes, I just want you to know I had nothing to do with this. Right. <laughs> you know, like, fight. That's just the best. All right. Who you got for coach? Who's your head coach? We're not doing DH. Oh, yeah, DH. Who's your DH? My DH, uh, Milwaukee's Farmist, dude. The gr maybe actually the most accomplished hitter in all baseball movies. I'm taking Mr. 3000, Stan <laughs> Ross. Oh, wait, I thought you were going to say Mr. 3000, the Bernie Mac movie. It is. Oh, it is? That's oh, Mr. Okay. 3, because the storyline of the movie is that Bernie <laughs> was like this great player. He played with Yount and Molitor and all them. Yeah. But because of a statistical error, they had him listed at 3000 and he quits in his prime. So yeah. he's like, fuck it. But then he has to come back and get those extra three hits as an old man. I had... That's not a bad pick. That's not a bad pick. Anyone who has 3,000 hits deserves to be on your baseball team. On the team. team. I kind of agree. I, I have my... At DH, I originally had Pedro Serrano. That's a good one. Uh, but I'm changing it. Because um, it just occurred to me that I totally forgot one of the best ever. And that's Tom Selleck and Mr. Baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of weak, though. He's on a mini trajectory. He got kind of washed out of the no, league. Dude, had to go he play uh, Japanese ball. Yeah, he's playing in Japan. He walks out to the field and he goes, I could piss over these fences. Right. With his fucking mustache. That's hey, badass. I love Tom Selleck, but guess what, dude? That shit's not going to uh, fly in the real big. Plus, uh, plus, back in the day, this is a real thing. Tom Selleck, uh, they did a celebrity, like a real celebrity home run derby mm -hmm. during the All-Star game, and he fucking hit one all the way out of Wrigley Field. He hit a real home run? Yeah, all like over, like into the street in Wrigley Field. Wow. Like, he hit a real home run in Wrigley. Yeah. I can't believe the Cubs I used to have him. I used to have this like <laughs> this uh, VHS tape when I was a kid, <coughs> and it was like 1993, the year in review MLB, and it was like all these great highlights, and all of a sudden it was just like Tom Selleck just parking one at Wrigley, and I was like, right. what the fuck? Yeah. And that was like, uh, what, three minutes of baby was out at the time? I was mm -hmm. like, that dickhead? Yeah. Can hit dingers. Oh, Magnum PI, yeah. of course, dude. Yeah. Super crazy. So, yeah, uh, Tom Selleck. And you knew who else was a, a close a close second there? Would have been Parkman from uh, Major League. Yeah. Major League 2. Yeah. He oh, was tough. The girls really love it when he does that. He's things. another chain smoker, too. Yeah. Yeah. And you get a piece of this one, I'll look at it. I think Stan Ross, though, has got to be the pick. I'll call that one the masturbator. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, now we're down to manager. <coughs> Head coach. Easy choice, dude. Lou from Major League. Yeah, that's a He's good He's got pick. the voice and just <laughs> dong out the whole movie. Yeah. Player hands him a contract, throws it on the ground, <laughs> hey, and Lou, pisses. Lou, you want to coach the Indians? I don't know. I got a guy on the other line about some white walls. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just And Just also, yeah. He doesn't care. Has it out with the fucking owner of the team, butt naked. You know what I mean? For an old man. Just doesn't give a shit. Tough talk galore. He'll yeah. get into it. He'll get thrown out of a game, kick some dirt, throw yeah. some bases. I love that. Yeah. He's the man. I, uh, for my head coach... Uh, I'm taking young Billy Haywood. Young Billy from, Haywood. From Little Big League. Look, the kids, you, you put him in the locker room, and look what he did. He, he put uh, he put the fun and the love back in the game for those guys. And Very much like Ed. They really Sullivan. played hard for him. Uh, I went as far as to, I've got two more coaches. God, you're just taking all kinds of You guys. can do whatever you want. Uh, but my, my uh, who do I have? Oh, shit. You definitely took... Uh, Daniel Stern from oh, yeah. Rookie of the Year. He's right? my pitching coach. Daniel pitching Stern coach, is my pitching yeah. coach. For That's going to be a hell of a pitching staff to hang out with. <laughs> yeah, him and Chet Stedman and Ren, your own gunner. I mean, they're already, they already have chemistry. Right. But my third base coach or my bench coach was Lou for Major League. Um, and then uh, probably like a first base coach would be Dennis Farina. Yeah. From from Little Big League. Even yeah. though he got fired, I'd bring him back. I'd be like, hey, Bring Dennis. a tough talk. <laughs> yeah. You want to take it easy on these guys? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why'd you go run along? Who is your actual manager? Oh, it's Billy Haywood. Billy, Billy Haywood's Haywood's my head, the head manager. He's my head oh, coach. Okay. He's my head coach. Okay. Yeah. Head coach him. <clears throat> and you got Lou. I think you know. I think we take our teams out there. I probably, I probably ten run rule you in five. I mean, if we're just, if we're just being honest about it. Right. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to make you feel dumb. 
or bad about yourself. What, for winning? No, I mean, you're underutilizing Kelly Leak at what, second base? First off, I'm not, because Kelly Leak is not as accomplished or great as anyone in my outfield short of maybe Serrano, and I can't play him anywhere else. No way. And I need the power. No way. Kelly Leak can play anywhere defensively. Yeah. To be my ninth hitter and my, my second baseman, it's probably the worst guy on my team, actually. That's pretty good. What? Kelly Leak's the worst player Not on my even team. Close, dude. Oh yeah. No, you got you got the guy that was in major league for three minutes playing first base. He was a triple crown winner. The stats no, talk for so themselves. So they say. So they oh, say. You're out of your mind. Who's your announcer? Like if you had a home announcer, who'd you Uker. announce? You got Bob Uecker. Bob Uecker. I think oh, I'm yeah. taking John Candy from Rookie of the Year. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I haven't seen a floater like that since Scruffy McGee. <laughs> 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 I do, but I mean Bob Euchre. If I had a dream team, it'd be John Candy right. and Bob Euchre just sitting next to each other, on there. Although the uh, uh, what was what was his backup's name on Major League? Was it Monty? Dynamite dropping yeah. Monty. <laughs> that broadcast school is really paying off. <laughs> <laughs> Plus he's always just drinking Jack Daniels yeah. and stuff. Like I love it. You can't say that there because I don't yeah, give man. a damn. Nobody's listening. I think yeah. Plus he picked Roger Dorn like. The, one of the lamest characters in Major League. Even better third baseman in the movie. Ed Sullivan. No, he's a, he's a How about what's the third chef. baseman's name with the Jerry Curls and Angels in the outfield? He was the best player on the team. Yeah, he was pretty good. Wasn't he was he? their best player. That's true. Hell, I was I was ready to convert Stan the Man Ross. I might have picked base. him, but I can't remember the character's name or the actor. So I yeah. can't just say, like, the third baseman. Useless. Dude, Dude. In the outfield. Ed Sullivan, man. Baseball's all about you the saber metrics and going out of the box. You know who else offense. was in the outfield and Angels in the outfield, right? Adrian Brody was one, yeah. of, was one of the outfielders as well. Yeah. They had a lot of famous people in that flick. Actually. Yeah. Like went yeah. on to careers, shockingly enough. Yeah. I still think Major League is the best baseball movie. I only had, I think I only had two guys for Major League on my team. But it, like for a minute, I was just like, I'll just take that team. Yeah. They're fucking great. They're awesome. Who are these fucking guys? Exactly. <laughs> the Asians raking them head. Like, yeah. I don't know. Who are these fucking guys? And pitchers. We That's where you in. also fell short, dude. Stevie Nebraska. Dude, Chet Stedman, Chet Stedman owns Steve Nebraska. He's definitely ghost in this house, yeah, by the way. That's why the power's falling. Things I think are just so. falling down. Well, that light was thing. flickering. We had a light flickering forever and then just like rolling brown out. Uh, not a real rolling brown out, or I'd be way, feel way cooler about myself right now. Some chick just rolling Considering brown Considering it's just out me, you, and Sam in there, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> All right. So I guess that's it for the list. Uh, go ahead, comment. <clears throat> Hit us up on Twitter. Tell us who won. Uh, if you guys have ideas, you guys don't have. You don't have to rub it in that I won. Well, you. I guarantee. Like this list. Like usually we're kind of split. I like, almost, almost bet you this list. Like Team Nick just fucking dominates. I doubt it. I mean, my list is so good. So it's good. Pretty average. I, I mean, guess. Mm, I don't know if it is. I just. I've got you in every offensive category. I got the best defense. Nah, dude. We're set. Nah, bro. We're set. Nah, bro. Yeah. But anyway, if you guys, that was uh, Let's Go Cards 04. On, uh, that was his idea to hey, do this. Hey, dude, you're a young man, I assume. Fix your life, dude. The Cardinals are a fucking punk-ass <laughs> game, dude. Get out, man. <laughs> no, but thanks thanks for the list idea. If you guys have list ideas that you want us to do, just send them to us on Twitter. Comments on YouTube. I don't care. We'll do anything. Yep. We're fucking lunatics. We love doing this kind of stuff. Yes. And, I, I mean, quite frankly, I just love being Griffey's ass up and down this place. Every week, uh, but He's a boy uh, with a rampant imagination. Seriously, if you guys get any ideas about anything, shout them out to us on Twitter, on on YouTube. We're gonna start doing some vlogs, uh, some kind of condensed versions of some of this stuff, so we can get a little bit more personal with y'all, motherfuckers. Right there, right there. Uh, I paid a thousand dollars for my sneakers. No, I didn't. I just been singing that song all day. More flip flop. I don't know why. <laughs> Two chains. Uh, but yeah. That's it for today's shows, kids. Make sure you tune in next week. Uh, and until then, we'll be here fucking ourselves. You know that, true. I got a fucking itch. Hold it, hold it, and cut. This fuck, fuck this, dude. I hate this shit. <laughs> I just, oh, like, just kidding. I just wanted to have like a good sound. That came out of nowhere. I just wanted to have a good sound for the end.